Hi, I'm Mary Myerska. I'm an applied mathematician working with biologists on bees. And I'm Marlena Beekman and I'm a biologist and I work on real bees and not computer bees like Mary. I think you tend to get stuck in your own way of thinking and then when someone comes out from a completely different discipline and looks at things from a different angle and then often they ask, well, but why? Why do you think that's the case and have you thought about this particular angle? And then if you start looking into it, you often realise that the truth is actually quite different from what you thought. I enjoy um, seeing how these very simple creatures work together to create very complicated and finely tuned colonies. In the spring, if a colony is doing well, a swarm of bees will leave the colony to found a new colony. So it's about half the workers and the old queen, they fly off and they settle as a hanging swarm in a tree or on a fence nearby. And then from that swarm, scouts go out to find new, potential new nest sites. And when a scout finds a new nest site that she thinks might be suitable, she returns to the swarm and she does a waggle dance. So she runs along waggling her abdomen and the direction of the waggle relative to the vertical gives the direction of the nest site from the swarm, the length gives the distance, and the number of times she does the waggle run gives some indication of the quality. So if she's found somewhere that's like a gorgeous mansion with water views, she'll do lots and lots and lots of runs. If she's found somewhere that's rather like a scuzzy bedstead in Newtown that would kind of do, you know, she might do a couple of runs. But her waggle dance will have attracted other bees to go and visit the site as well. So eventually the good sites accumulate lots of followers and the poor sites may not accumulate any. The, the dancers might just die out. I devised some mathematical theory about how the scouts were recruited to dance for the nest site and to visit the nest site. When I looked at that theory, it suggested that either scouts could make a decision to choose a good nest quickly, or if they only had poor nests to choose, they would take longer over it to make a more accurate decision. So I made this prediction that the number of scouts in a swarm should be the same, regardless of the size of the swarm. To determine whether large swarms have more scouts than small swarms, we set up two swarm sizes. The large one was about 15,000 bees, the small ones were 5,000 bees. We set those up in the same environment, although not at the same time, and we basically looked at how many scouts those swarms had. Well, it turns out I was wrong, so it was worth asking the question. And it turned out that the large swarms had about twice as many scouts. They were able to find three times as many nest sites. And sort of to our surprise, they were both able to make decisions quite quickly but the large swarms, because they had more scouts, were able to gather more information about the environment. So probably the quality of their decision making might be slightly different from when you're a small swarm. The work on the pattern of dancing showed that bees were able to choose the best site in a consistent way, provided the individual bees behave in a consistent way. So occasionally in experiments you see that one bee has a very strong opinion and it's a mediocre site but comes back and does a real good salesman job on it and sways the whole process. So there is an element of randomness in this, even though we know that the bees can in fact make the correct decision, and they do most of the time. I think people find it surprising that mathematicians are working with bees and ants and other insects. But maths is constantly making contributions in areas where people don't realise. So for example, areas like vaccination strategies, um, risk management, what will we do if Ebola arrives in Australia, conservation biology, the spread of cancer in the body, the flow of blood in the body. There's lots of different areas in the life sciences where maths is very important and it gives an extra edge and it gives a new window on the world. So if you think about life sciences, do think of mathematics as well. They're not mutually exclusive and they work in a complementary way.